Right, so that to introduce our next guest, Mr. Harvey McCann. Yeah. <laughs> Harvey. Harvey McKay, everyone. Happy right. need a mic. <laughs> he, he's been told he doesn't need a mic, but no, we're, we're, we're giving you <laughs> one. <try> <laughs> How are you doing, mate? I'm, I'm good, mate, you? Yes, very, very well. Now we've been... What a couch. What a couch, man. <laughs> this doesn't yeah. happen, by the way. Look at this that couch. This doesn't happen. So remember, get sharing, get tagging. <laughs> Escapade Live, this is the first one. So again, massively appreciate everyone. Nice wee pizza break there. And that pizza was from Baffo, um, next to Kelvin Grove. Yes. The art gallery. <laughs> Just in case he's wanting to go in, try it out. Yes, and they, they pay us... Uh, uh, to 200 pizzas per month uh, for that. Uh, no, no. But, yeah. <laughs> so Harvey said he might fall asleep during this because he's got a carb overload, but we, we, we should be all right. So, Harvey, then, we have, we've had you in the studio a few times now. Uh, we've had been on the podcast, and, you know, we've seen you playing, we've booked you and stuff like that, so it's awesome, awesome. So how, how, how are you doing, first of all, in I'm terms... i good, mate, yourself? Very, very well, and musically, how are you getting on? I really good. Um, I've kind of the past month or two I've not been that busy, but September, October last year, uh, and about maybe six or seven weeks, I got about tra- twenty tracks. So, so I just did a really prolific period. So pretty much I reckon this whole next year's kind of covered with music. But that's me just starting wow. back in just now. But sometimes it just comes, and uh, every time I was sitting down, it was just tune after tune, and it was effortless. And I'm just like, I'm not going to stop. And then it gets to that point where you just kind of go, right, I'm starting to bang the head now. And then that happens, and then you just give yourself a wee break. But I get 20 tunes before it, so it's pretty good. So you just try to capitalise when that happens, isn't it? Aye, and sometimes when it happens, you're like, this is going to go on forever. (laughs) And it stops, and you're like, no. (laughs) What do you do? (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was it. I made it. It's going to keep... And then it just goes bang, and that's it. And I think sometimes what happens is you come across a slightly change of... You've obviously got a formula in the way you want. Up, but something happens and inspires you of a slightly different way of working and then you get all this stuff out of it and then you've just milked it and it stops and then something else will happen it'll be like maybe some new sounds and a new synth and then that sparks you and away you go and that's what I find and as I say September, October it was just non-stop so so nice. seeing the, the periods where it's not as non-stop do you yep. still work at it or do you just I go still, nah, I'm going to take a break you know, or do you I, still, still? I still work at it but it's one of those ones I know when it's not happening but I've been really Right music, I think at the beginning, I think you need to, you kind of need to keep going because you've got to kind of push yourself and learn. So like even when it's not happening, I would say keep doing it because you'll learn something getting from A to B. Because if you just give up, then you'll never, you're never going to learn. But I think once you've kind of got your trade, you kind of go right. The the kind of creative juices aren't quite flowing. Give yourself a wee bit of space um, and don't kind of because sometimes you can make yourself sick of it. But usually, I usually find that comes after a really prolific period where I've got loads done and I go, that's all right, because I've got tons done so I can take a wee breather. So I think one of the things we, we'd spoke to all the guys about, right. if you want to just maybe share a wee bit the journey on how you got into it and what really inspired you to get into it and what made you just go, do you know what, I think this is it's about time I want to start punting the tunes out, man. <laughs> right. It's a pretty, pretty long journey. What it was, was I'd, uh, I'd moved about quite a bit when I was younger and then I eventually moved to East End of Glasgow. And it was a nice bit I was staying in, but the school I went to was a bit, just a tad shifty. But no tea. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and like when I went there, it was people just jumping about, fighting gangs, all that shit. Wasn't my cup of tea. And I was in primary seven, I think, and I went to a summer club, and there was guys who were second or third year at high school, and they were all going to the res, the metro tapes, they were starting to buy vinyl, and just instantly I was like, wow, this is something I want to be involved in. I don't want to be out there causing trouble and doing stuff like that. And even then, they were into it, but I wasn't just into it. I was just obsessed on a different level. And that carried through, through all my mates and everybody else that was into it. They were always into it. That was my life. That was all I ever did. And I did that right up into my kind of early 20s. And then somebody gave me, one of my good mates, Barry, gave me a, a laptop and he just started using Reason. He literally, because I hadn't started to write music and he just went, take that. He says, give me all the software on it. He says, you can keep it forever if you don't get your own one, but if you get your own laptop, give me it back, but you can keep it as long as you want. You need to get into this. What a legend. And, and I was what li- a I, yes, Barry. Yeah, and I was literally, I was literally just fucking hoot, and that was it. So I did that, 
for years. That was 2004. Um, and it would literally, and I was still working all the time, and I would literally, my, my girlfriend at the time, she would literally come home, and the front door would be a line wide open, and I'd be sitting there with my jacket on, still writing tunes. I literally just been running us. And so, <laughs> I didn't even close the door. I didn't even close the door. I didn't even take my jacket off. And she would go to bed in the black night, and I'd put my headphones on, and that was it. And then, what had happened? But that's what you need to be like at the beginning. A lovely relationship. Man. I was about to say, I was, I was about to say, a loving relationship like that. I mean, it lasted a while. But the thing, no, but I had what you're saying that way. There's somehow that relationship fine. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the, thing, the thing is, though, even then, right, right, I did make some time, right? But the thing was, it was like, she's like, I, she said, I, she never got angry or anything like that because she was like, you're really good at it and you're so passionate about it. She said, I was lucky to have somebody like that at the time that was so understanding. Um, but so, and the, what had happened was, uh, I'd started writing music and then I wrote a track and I nearly got it signed to a label and I was, computer wasn't running great and I went to defrag the hard, somebody went defrag your hard drive and then I just heard this physical doo and I'm like. <laughs> we could it? hear gasps in the right? crowd though. And literally it just said insert hard drive. I'm like, fuck no. no. So that was that. I lost everything, and then and I had a, a car that was dying. It was literally on its arse, and it was. I was going to get a new car, and I just said to the bank, "I want a new car," and I just went straight to Mac and bought myself like the big tower <laughs> unit. Spent about three grand, and and that was it. Made the commitment. That made the commitment, and then I literally I cut down all my hours at work. So I was only doing two two. I was in construction, so I could earn decent money, but I was doing two days a week, and the rest of the time I was in the studio. But I literally we got up at like eight o'clock in the morning, and I'd been in the studio all. See the first day, I, the first day I got it right. This is so not rock and roll, but the first day I got it, I got it, get delivered, and I woke up at eight o'clock, and I think she was through staring at her parents. And I, I, it was about eight o'clock and I was working all the way through and I didn't eat anything, I didn't drink anything. I'm just sitting there in my box of sorts, just writing music, right? And then I looked at the clock and it was like six o'clock in the morning, 22 hours straight it went by and I'm like, I need to get some sleep. But that's what I was like. And that was kind of the, how the journey started. And then I think, then it was like, so that was 2004, a few sort of, I think Pear Tracks was one of the first ones. And then slowly, shortly after that, the Soma picked me up, and then it was a kind of journey started from there. But it's literally been since primary seven my journey started, so it's a long, long time. See, funnily, <clears throat> one of the things that Ivan Cuts had mentioned uh, on the podcast, like he had went to a club in school mm -hmm. where it was like DJ and stuff, and like yourself, you're saying, you know, you had friends there in school or whatever. Yep. And that's what gives me a lot of joy and pride in what we do at Escapade, because like we're in schools and we might be breeding the next Harvey McKay's in there, you know, the next Rebecca Vassman's, the next Gary Beck's, well, that's the next Harvey, us. There was, you know? nothing there was nothing like, like that. that. Yeah. That's the scene. It was all sort of, as I say, organic in the scene. This is the thing, I did music at school and I never did well at music in school because it was born, it was shit. Aye, the glockenspiel, you know what I mean? And now you, and now you like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Dude? But I take them, man. I was in the drum room all the time playing drums, mixing rave tapes, and selling tapes at school, so I was already into it, but they didn't facilitate that side of the market now, and it's good to see schools and the educational system starting to go, well, wait a minute, not just that's pie in the sky, because they see the colossal industry that's yeah. out there, and they're starting to sort of... You that's know? precisely it, aye. Aye. and it's kind of what we do in the schools, we're, we're kind of linking in with the curriculum already. Uh -huh. Because yeah. like it's no longer like you know composing classical music. And that's it. Headphones on with a keyboard. It's like they're yeah. seeing DJs like yourselves that are massively successful. Yeah. That's a career now. Yeah, do you know it what I mean? is. And I think before then it was like even back then when it was you did have these kind of superstar DJs. There wasn't really a built industry for it. There was big raves and big names and it was a very small few people, but now there is an actual genuine full industry, bookers, promoters, everything sitting there. So it's a genuine industry, so it is mm -hmm. a genuine route for people to take mm -hmm. as a career if they're willing to make the commitment. Yeah. I mean, we were in a high school the other day and you've got the head teacher like, in the session with us right. and he's like, we're talking about frequencies, talking about like the low end, the high end and like how engaging the head teachers are now. They're That's like, amazing. it's brilliant because yeah. we're talking about Ableton. We've got Ableton up, working through recorded samples, like field recordings and stuff that we've done. The head teacher's like championing it. Nice it shows. Totally. The glockenspiel again. I would. <laughs> So I think, see, one of the things that we have done tonight with, with the guys is we've spoken about a lot about the journeys yeah. and things like that, right? One, of, I think for some of the tech heads in here and people that are really wanting to dial in music production, oh, yeah. instead of just asking what your processes are, what are maybe a couple of things you would avoid when it comes to making music? 
Uh, avoid. Uh, I think one of the things Gary said earlier on as well is trying to kind of follow what's happening or technology. I think just being yourself is really important and finding your own kind of voice, I think, because a lot of people will go, I want to be on that label or be associated with that. And then they're literally just being clones of what that label already has. They're not wanting another 10 guys of them. They're wanting somebody that fits, but is different. Uh, I think that's one of the mistakes that people make at the beginning. But I think at the beginning, it's like everybody sort of emulates somebody they like, but I think the key is that really morphing into your own thing. The other thing I've said as well, uh, to a lot of, in a lot of interviews as well, so I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I think it's really important is when you're writing music, I think one of the really important things is when you're writing tracks, I find at the beginning and say you're starting a track and you get to a point where you go, I don't really know how to get this any further, is just finish it. Even if you don't like the track, because you've got to a point where you're stuck and you don't know what to do. Now, if you just give up, you've not learned the lesson how to get that from there Over the to line. there. So even if the tune's not good, right, you'll learn how to get from there to there and you go, right, that's something in the toolkit for the next time. And the more and more you do that, you've got all these different things in your toolkit. So by the time it gets to whatever track you're in, you're going, oh, I know what to do with that, I know what to do with that. But if you just stop and go, oh, uh, I don't like that tune, I don't know where to go and start another one, you've not learned anything. So I think at the beginning, it's finishing tunes. And I think a lot of people suffer from not finishing what they start. And I think if you don't finish something, what have you learned? You just learned to give up and move on. And, and, and you get to the same place, the next project, you'll just stop at the same challenge I, at the next one. I had, like, on my computer, I started in Reason, and I think I've got, like, 300 and odd Reason files, and every one of them's finished. Not to a level where they're good, because they were all shite, <laughs> but I made sure I got them <laughs> to a point where I went, that's the start and that's the finish. It might not be great, but I never quit halfway through, and I think Huge really lesson in that. Massive, massive. Right, here's another one, then, for the people that are starting out, that are on the production journey. When are they ready? Because I think there's a lot of self-doubting people who think, oh, I've not been doing this for 10 years, so I'm not going to be accepted. And then there's other people, you know, so it's like, when do you get to the point where you go, do you know what, I think this might be good enough to send out, even if you're in your first year and you just so, you know what I mean? It's like, when do you when know you're ready? Re when is it ready? That's a tricky question because the thing is, I think, I think you need to be slightly delusional at the same time because back then, when I was writing music, I thought it was a shit, right? But when I listened back to it, it was fucking Awful. It was shit. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was the shit. I was shit. Your mum's right? agreeing here. But I think that's, that's right. Uh, she is. She's right. She told me it was shit. Like, but but what I'm saying is, I think you need to have that self belief as well. But I think the other thing is, I think it's. I don't think people should rush wanting to get into it as well, because a lot of people just want something signed. If you get something out too early and your name's attached to it, you might look back and go, "Fuck, I probably wasn't ready." I think. I think. You, you, you sort of get a general feeling when your production level, you, you'll know yourself, you'll go, right, wait a minute, this is really <coughs> genuinely starting to sound. And other people will start, as I say, you'll just, feel, you'll just feel it, but I would say don't rush into it. Did you have someone helping you out in the beginning or like, like, like even as a, a case of you've got a track to a point and then it's like, I send it to someone to do this mastering no. thing or like, you know, how did it get to a point and like, did you send it and they went, mate, that's not even anywhere near um, mastering or what, you know? Sort of, sort of, I would say, yeah, God, you, you got to remember when I started, there wasn't even YouTube, do you know what I mean? And there was nobody to teach me, as I say, my mate went, right, here's reason. But at the same point in time, like, he didn't have time to show me about it, so I just had to learn myself. But the thing is, I mean, I remember, so when I first got... I got Reason and then I got Cubase, because Reason, I mean, I think you've got VSTs in it now, but you never used to. And I remember I got a copy of Cubase, right? And I hate, I hate reading manuals and stuff like that, right? But I remember, I'm not joking, I spent three weeks trying to get it to make a noise. I'm like, just beep. I couldn't even... <laughs> How do you make a noise? If you just see if I put the metronome on, I'd be happy. I couldn't have figured it out. But I just kept plodding away and slowly I got it to make a noise. And it's probably an error message, but, <laughs> but, but that, there was nothing about like that then at the start, right? But then, as I say, you've mentioned Davy Forbes. Davy Forbes was really good at the beginning, right? Completely different genre, but I'd met him. They were doing the scanners thing, right? And Davy and my worker, they're great guys. And I remember I'd sent, and my mum will remember this as well, I'd sent him, I think I'd gave him a CD actually, right? That's, so I'd gave him a CD and it was just, the thing is, even now when I listen back, I still love the ideas, right? But when I gave him the CD, he sent me back a message and he's gone, 
I can tell that you've got lots of potential and you've got the head for all these creative ideas, but they're maybe a wee bit all over the place. And his advice was, this was probably the only advice I got at the beginning, and it was pick maybe one style or genre that you're interested in, forget everything else, and nail that, because cause you're doing a bit of everything, you're, you're like a bit of a jack of all trades, and, and when you approach a label as well, they'll go, what's this guy about? So if you pick what you want to do, and focus on it, then you're really homing your skill set, and that was a really important bit of advice to me. And I think Davey even mentioned that when he was on the, when the he podcast. Did the podcast, and that was a really important bit. But as far as for the the actual production and stuff itself, it was just totally figuring it out myself. Because as I say, I started 2004. There was no YouTube. There was no nothing. It was it was really back in the days where there wasn't really much, unless you knew somebody else. And even then, I prefer learning stuff myself because. I remember I, I'd started using Reason and I got a Reason book, right? And I remember I'm going, right, I'm going to force myself to read this. And I read it to learn how to do this process and it just totally buckled my head. Then at the end of it, well, it took me about two days. I knew how to do that already. But when I read it, it just confused me. So I just like playing with stuff. And I think that's another good thing as well. If you just experiment with equipment yourself, you're probably going to find your own way of working it rather than sitting watching the a manual. tutorial yeah, or a yeah. manual and it'll tell you if you want to do this, do this. If you're playing about you go, well, see if I do that and that. Fuck, that does that and that's a bit different. And then you develop your own sound. And I was just about to say, finding your own way to work it technically yeah. develops your sound at the same time, I suppose, doesn't it? And again, definitely something I say all the time. See, as long as it sounds okay, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, I think people overthink it as well. And I think even like with DJing, because we do so many lessons, like one of the main problems we see with all of our students is I can't finish in, right? right and, yeah. and and that's what we're talking about. And it's like, even with DJing though, it's like, oh, I have to follow this set formula. Mm. Like, no, you don't. Listen. Does it yeah. sound all right? Don't be looking for visual cues. Don't the only visual cues from the crowd really, isn't it? That's yeah. the only the cues that you're looking for. Is it going well or is it not? You know, and you, and you can tell by the reaction. But it's about listening, mm -hmm. and that's the same in music production. I think that's a cracking point there in terms of like using synths or hardware or whatever. Yeah. You can read the manual, but then you might just learn a certain way. Like just actually learn it your own way. Yeah. That's cool. That's there's really a, cool. There's another thing as well. I usually it's a wee analogy that I use as well. Is at the beginning as well when you're starting to write music, right? You're not massively in control of the equip equipment you're using. So you're kind of generally, and that's probably why I was doing all those different styles, you're kind of stumbling across things, going, oh, that sounds good, that sounds good, and you end up doing all these crazy array, all these different styles. But I find when you really develop your sound is when you really become in control of the equipment that you're using, because you're not stumbling across things, you're really tightly navigating where the sound's going, then you become in control of the output, and then that sound becomes yours. Whereas at the beginning, the way I say it, it's like when you get driving lessons at the beginning, the car's kind of rolling along the road, you're like that, right, oh, right. Then in the end, you're in control, and it's a bit like that with the equipment and the sounds. At the beginning, eventually, you once you really become in control, you're in control of your sound, and then that becomes you, and I think that's, that's something that's quite important as well. Amazing. So, see in a typical, you've got a blank canvas in front of you. Right. What's first? Do you... Start with he the comes out with chaos, doesn't he, man? <laughs> the stuff that's coming out of Harvey, man. The Harvey like, How is that in his head? <laughs> I don't want to know what else is going on in that head. I don't want to know what's going on in my head. But that's the amazing thing, though. That's amazing. A, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, I think it's a, I think everybody's got a strategy. What, what tends to happen for me is I always, like a lot of people, I'll tend to start with uh, the, 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 the bass and the kick drums and the kind of general lower frequencies are things I'm really good at, right? And I'll start with that. And where the track goes, tends to be inspired by the sounds that I'm playing about, the VSTs, the, the sonic palette that I'm starting creating will inspire where the tune goes, but this is what I'm saying, so at the beginning, uh, that can kind of go anyway, but you, you develop this toolkit and this sound, so then it ends up being within a framework of what you then start to be recognised for, so I think, although it's a blank canvas and it's kind of the world's your oyster, you just, as I say, you develop this toolkit, this skill set, and then as I say, you end up navigating where you want to go. But as I was saying uh, before, I was like, I, I, I've been getting right into some AFX twin and some electro and stuff like that. And that kind of exposed me recently to not being so within my own framework and going, right, what I'm, uh, rather than falling between that and just going, I'm going to go wild with any sound. 
and I can do whatever I want. And that has really <laughs> opened up my mind to doing a side project and seeing what I'm capable of. And I think it's really opened my mind sonically and production-wise, and it's had a massive effect on just my whole over appreciation of music and my direction. So mm -hmm. I think it's always good to ex ex expose yourself to a lot of other things, but when you're starting, I would say focus probably on the, the most important thing you want to achieve uh, and navigate your way through that. And then once you, once you go, right, ah, I know exactly what I'm doing with that, I've nailed that, you can start mm -hmm. experimenting and then that will then in turn come back and affect your, your kind of music right. you're doing as well. Do you ever go in with an idea like say Black Dolphin, right? right. Na, na, na. Did you ever go into the studio wait, that comes to you at any what point? What did they go like? <laughs> do you know, we all know it, we all know it. Yeah. Do you know, do you know, uh, do, do you know what, we had that mate and any time he, 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 he would go, ah, do you know this tune and you would do that and he would, he, he would know what you were talking about and he would just go, nah. <laughs> and you would do it again and you do it again and he'd be like, nah, I never heard it. And you're like, shut up, yeah, why do I, you know? Right, so I, uh, good question. So, because that's such an iconic piece <laughs> and, and that track, right? right you I, think of that tune, you think the bass and then that part. Would ever like something in your head oh, go? Black Dolphin. Aye, Black Dolphin. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Uh, no, do you know what? It was a. It was. A, I, I, yet again, I'd come up with all the, the drums and all the bottom ends of it, right? And uh, yet again, it was just. I opened up. It was a. It's actually a synthesizer. I think it's a Tau bass line. It's meant to be like a wee a, 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 kind of a arpeggio kind of 303 type thing, but you can turn it all off and use it as a synth. And I opened it up and I was just playing about with it. Uh, and I was playing about with different oscillators and stuff and I just got that wee sound and instantly, as soon as I heard that rave kind of amazing sound, instantly my brain just went da -da -da -da, and played it, <laughs> that was it. So the sound inspired, right. it's all like, Ryan used to joke about this as well, I'm like, it's like, the tune kind of tells you what it wants. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you can go, I want that, and it's like, nope, nope, nope. And you play it and it goes, that's what I want. And right. do you know what I mean? It's I think that maybe applies more to when you're adding bits, but... It's like, I, I just heard that noise and it was instantly in my head and that was it, you know mm. what I mean? See that whole thing about the tunes writing itself, it tells you what it wants, I think you that's fascinating. Try, you can try, and, like, this is what we, we were saying, it's like, you can, you, can, you, you can try and make a tune do a certain thing, but it'll be like, nope, nope, nope. And then you, and it's almost like it goes, aye, that's what I want, and then that's it. But no matter how much you try and make it do the thing you think will work, it's not going to let you if it doesn't work. It's, it's weird, because I know any time I've ever been inspired in the studio, or, or, or like even sitting with you or whatever, it's always came through a mistake. And I'll go, oh, I've just heard something. Oh, How would you not try that? Like, oh, you know, it's always a wee mistake that you stumble across or a sound, as you right. say, that dictates where it's maybe going to go. But I think and that's another crazy thing, which is a great, great um, bit of chat there when you're talking about driving the car thing and, like, you're in control. It's so true. When you start driving, you're, just like, you're a riot driving. Even once you pass your test, you're still, like, not fully. And it's, like, it takes it takes years. And, like, that whole control of it, it's, like, trying to get the sounds of what are in your head into a screen mm. is very difficult. But as you say, as time goes on, you'll start realising how you go about that, and that is so cool. Man. As, as, as I say, it's, it's not for me. It's it's not getting this, the ideas in my head down, but it's like as I say, it's when I'm sonically experimenting. The sounds then just go bang in my head. Goes, yeah. that's what I want to play. Yeah, yeah. It was like there was I was playing about the other day, and I was I was working on a techno track, and then I was just I opened up one of my VSTs and I was playing about, and I got this bass line, and instantly I went stuff that, shut down the track, opened it back up, and started another tune because I knew exactly where that noise wanted, and it had nothing to do with that tune, and I knew right away I might I know exactly where that wants. Scrap it, and I started again. But that just comes with experience, and you know you've just got all these hours and experience. So you're like I know exactly what that wants to do and as I say it's almost like the noise itself goes do this with me do you know what I mean? <laughs> totally tease me I mean <laughs> aye aye later uh, <laughs> so I and again that just that comes through that yeah. muscle of doing though isn't it like a, the, you know your memory or your brain muscle going to the gym or whatever the, the right. more and more and more you do it the more you just start going do you know what I know when to cut off and start something new or whatever because I think other people might try and flog a dead horse sometimes <laughs> and go you know but Again, you were. I, I. But again, you were saying though you should just finish stuff, even, even so, if you know, even if it's shit that way, which which is definitely interesting because I can totally under, I can totally understand that because I'm on my production journey and it's like, it's actually just about trying to get it as far as you can mm -hmm. and not giving up and going, oh, I'm bored of this next now project. because I don't really know how to get it to the next point. So I think I'll start something new. Exactly, exactly. There so, goes my advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> too much. Do you know, no, do you know, give up too easily. <laughs> the, the, there's something in the middle, I think, of of us all, though, and like everyone is on their own unique journey. What about yourself, is. Gary? Like, do you go in with an idea? Or do you just start with the drums? Like? I sometimes have an idea. Yeah, sometimes um, a lot of the time it just starts to make its own way. Kind of Aye, and you know, you, you, you know, you get to the experience. You just kind of get to know, like. I've done enough here, that's enough, that's us complete, finished. I think um, the point of like when you're, you're trying to make the decision that it's done, I think like when you're changing 0 0.1 of the volumes of tracks, I always find, right, if I'm doing that, it's hard to put so it away, right? That's, that's See, new, the, right? the first one that... You're really in the weeds then when you're... <laughs> 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 that's done, that's done, that's done. Even down. 1.00 <laughs> will make the difference. <laughs> the, fir the first uh, version that you normally render is normally best. the best one. You know, and then you go back and start tinkering with it, and you're just like, what are you doing? Leave it alone. No. You know, well, it's, it's, it's done. It's that's fine, happened you know? to you plenty. Well, one thing I would say as well, and my brother, we do a project called the A-List, and we've learnt this quite a few times, and I'll do it as well. Woo. If you're working, <laughs> cheers. If, yes. you're doing, if you're doing, if you're doing, a, if you're working on a project as well, I always find it's good to like say you're at a certain stage, save it, and then go. And as soon as you save it, go like say the track we bought my track called the Wolf. It'll be Wolf point one A, and then when you save it, go point one A B or whatever. And then as you're working on it, sometimes you feel like I think it's kind of lost something, and then you'll go back and listen to that one that you've saved before you made changes. You're like shit, we just wrecked that. Yeah. So it's always yeah. good to have a save point to get back. Because you might have just spent a day on it and making it worse. Mm -hmm. And you never... I, nev I never clocked onto that. Reference point. For, for ages, I never clocked onto that. I would yeah. just kept saving over it. I and know. then I clocked that and I was like, oh, wow. Right, so mega different version. So if you did wreck it, you could go back to the point where it was actually... I mean, how many... Of we've done that. We've done, we've done that absolute loads. We've been working on tracks. And then we'd be like... And then we'd go back and we're like, let's hear the other version. We'd be like, we just spent nine hours to shite. <laughs> you know, we'd ruined it. But, but the thing is, it's important to at least admit that and know it and have the backup. And if you don't have that reference point, then you might never know and you might have spent... You might have, as you say, something good and then you've wrecked it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So... Hmm. Now, we, we had spoke about, but kind of made up earlier, we were talking about trying to do a wee word association game with the guys. Aye. Could be fun, make them all like a, a talk show. So keep it production based, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. So this goes for everyone on the couch, right? right. Um, so I'll say something like, in the production <laughs> mode, so I'll say like drums, first word that comes to your head when it, you're, you're talking about like producing, right? So I'll say drums, you maybe say whatever it is you use to make the drums or whatever, right? Do you know what I'm saying? What? So, I'm, I'm, what sorry if, I'm sorry if I've just put us right in the spot there. No, no, no. So, I'll, this is going well, I'll say, it. Going, see, Gary, bass. Bass. <laughs> micro cord, mini, mini uh, micro cord. There we go. That's what we're looking for, right? Yeah, okay. Rebecca. <laughs> what? All oh, right, sorry. Um, Re Rebecca, I would say house. What do you mean? What would you say? House music? Like if I said house music, Anyone. what would be the Who person? came up with this? Minge. Right, right, Anyone. No, no, no. You, wait. But I don't understand. You've what got to roll with it, Gary. You've just got to roll with me. Uh, house. No, wait. Snare. No, wait. How you're supposed to make house music? No. So just like... What? <laughs> Sorry. I'm so glad I brought this up there. rule book. <laughs> we do, but you wouldn't read it. So, no. <laughs> so right. Wait, okay. eh, like any word association game, right? So it'd be like, you know, you say it and it's like, what is the first thing that comes to your head, right? So maybe I was wrong with saying house to you, right? Maybe it's like, like a VST, <laughs> like a VST or something you use or anything that pops to your head kind of thing. This might be a shit idea. Start, start right, again. Go, right, go. Start again. Right, right, just tell me a different thing and I'll... Right, can you give Rebecca I'll smash one? smash it. Right, okay, bass. <laughs> Sample it off a record. There we go. That's, that's interesting. See, see, right? That's, that's how I do it. Oh, my <laughs> I was going to say techno. Techno. Uh, well, you can't do <laughs> Viking, Viking. Techno, Viking. Not, not at all, not at all. Is it Viking? See, I, mean, I, I see, I see. That. Gary, mastering. Raging. Connor Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> we plug for Connor. Right. Tough. Rebecca, Tough for you. collaboration. Jazz people. <laughs> I don't know. Do, uh, the reason why I asked that because well, you I mean, you do collab a lot and I love to well, see that. Yeah, I would probably say musicians. Okay, that's cool. Harvey. Aye. Studio. Studio. Neighbours. 
<laughs> That's brilliant. There we go. We're warming up now, mate. We're warming up now. Just, just to say, there was one time I was working on a tune, right? And I went to go to the toilet. There's a walk to the front door. My letterbox was going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, me, man. maybe a bit loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's brand new, but... <laughs> um, I, still, I still don't know how you get away with doing what you do in that wee place, place like with your neighbours, man. So the thing is, right, I've, like we, we, we've been in Harvey's set up and... Understanding neighbours, surely. And it's like, it's, it's, you wouldn't expect it with the size of the music that he makes. <laughs> You don't right. Need all this stuff. So this my next point. What what sort of stuff do you need to get started? Because I think people think, oh man, I need to twenty then. grand or ten creativity. Yeah, all you need is ideas and creativity, and just to spend the what the hell's that's it. Do you know what I mean? What about you, Rebecca? What would you say? That's why. Well, I literally recorded that whole album up, up with seventeen musicians on one microphone in one room. So like, basically, you don't need anything. You just need one mic. What were you, <laughs> you, you Gary? I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> I might have forgot the question. No. Um, oh, what do you, you need for me? Aye, well, as I said, pff, that's terrible. Uh, no, like for. As I, <laughs> no, because I think I think a big problem. Like, as, I said, as I said earlier, I've, I've I've stuck with the same stuff for the last like. 15 years, yeah. apart from the introduction of a few wee bits and bobs, like maybe the iPad with a few different apps or whatever, but. Aye. Um, am I imagining this, or is it, was it you that uses free Loops? No. Okay. <laughs> I use something that's pretty basic, Somebody though, you know what I mean? But I don't use free Loops. Yeah, okay. but yeah, because you are, you have got a totally, you, you use Acid Pro still, don't you? Or? Yeah, I still use it. Uh, where's my sponsorship deal for fuck's sake? It's been a long time, man. <laughs> but do you know what? It, do, it doesn't matter. It, it sounds it's, it's for, for, for me. For me, it was a, like a program I really felt comfortable with. I just quite enjoyed using it, and I tried dabbling about Ableton stuff, and I just didn't feel the same. And then um, mm. I went back to using Acid, the music program. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I came up with all my stuff, man. <laughs> I see the amount of times. Like, what do you use? I'm like Acid. No, 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 no. What do you I'm not asking you that. Use? I'm not asking you that. <laughs> <laughs> see, see the, thing is with the, so the thing is with social media and all the videos and all that, you look at these people and you see all this shit in the studio and it's just, it's all nonsense. But it's gathering dust. It's not, but a lot of it you're like, how much? The bite they don't fucking use half of it. But it, people, I think it looks good and people go, oh my God, look at their studio and you don't need any of it. Like my, my brother's just yeah. released a, an EP uh, on Needed Pains and when I was over in Toronto, I was talking to this girl and she's like, oh my God, like this and this and this and this and thinking, yeah, just a what was he using to get that? And my brother, sonically, the things that my brother took are incredible. And she's thinking he's got like a twenty grand studio, and people are just blank. You don't need all this stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. All right, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's uh, that is uh, an, a nice wee sentiment to to. I mean, I'm kind of. Yeah, yeah. You know, I actually seen a guy once, right? And this is how sad it gets, right? And he had some studio gear, right? And he'd actually draped loads of cables over certain things to make it look like a wee modular thing. And I'm no. like, get a grip, mate. Literally, he'd hung cables over it to make it look more cable-y. <laughs> that guy's got hundreds of cables. More, he knows more what he's doing. And, and, and then the thing is, you see something, like, I remember at one point when it was getting to the point where you'd all these modular crazy things and people would be like, posting a video. And people would be like, that's amazing. I'm like, that sounds like a fax machine. It's <laughs> terrible! That's not a tune! We spent See, 20 years getting away from that! The guy, honestly, the comics, wow, that's dope! I'm like, honestly, sounds like a fact! Harvey, see, see when you saw the picture of us, you holding a cat as well? <laughs> <laughs> So I think uh, I think right I think we should open up for some questions from the crowd right because again it's very very random to have the, uh, these three on the, the couch here pretty unique uh, so again makes it a very very special night for us we are we are totally in awe with everyone that showed up tonight so thanks again for showing up um, we were like man I hope, I hope, so, really? hope somebody shows up man I hope somebody comes man just invite hundreds of people see who comes right so. Um, <laughs> Have we got any questions? And again, I know that there's a few people earlier that were asking the guys questions. So they were a wee bit nervous to ask in front of everyone else. Don't worry. Nobody, no, no, nobody. We will be gentle. Nobody will be judging you, right? So we've got a question at the back. Right, let's start with Rebecca, because she made a noise there. So I want to know what that noise is. <laughs> uh, How much can you tell? Well, I don't know, but this one always like sticks out of my mind. Um, so. 
like I went to Sarajevo to play this gig and like I landed and I was like really hungover and everything. And I just like went back to the hotel, had half an hour sleep, really could not be bothered with it, right? And basically just went, got driven to this place and it was like the bo the bottom of a like a massive, it was like a multi-story car park, but like an abandoned multi-story car park. And I just walked into what I can only describe as like thousands of just mad work cunts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I can swear, but uh, I just walked in and I was just like, what is this, man? <laughs> it was fun, yeah, it was fun. Okay, bro, Harvey? Uh, I don't know, there's been a couple. I mean, I can always, I don't know if it's the maddest, but I can always remember, do you remember one of the ones we played? Was it, was it Belgium we played? Do you remember? And we were like, oh, we're going away. And we're like, oh, we're playing this week. Yeah, it'll be good fun. It was one of the first shows. In we Brussels. Went, Aye. Aye, we went play together. And then the guy's like, yeah, so this is where it's going to be. It's like a shopping mall, but we're going to make it a club. And it was literally a shopping mall turned into a Your nightclub. Your head. Oh, I was like, like what <laughs> thousands and thousands Aye, just of people. Like, and it was right at the beginning of things for Jeez, us. It's a shite now. No, but, no right, but we just didn't expect it. We're like, oh, I, do you know what I mean? Think it would be like a prime. That was very early you know until. I mean? Sorry. But it was, just, it was literally like the whole Buchanan Gallery or something was in it. It was just ram. But I mean, I've had a few different ones. I mean, sometimes it's well, it's quite bizarre when you're travelling so far. And like, the thing is, if you've got all your pals from where you, grew, where you grew up and you've got the same circle, you don't really think any different. So sometimes it's really bizarre to travel somewhere, like spend 14 and a half hours in a plane, go to Argentina and then go to a club and there's about seven or 8,000 people waiting there and you're like, what the? So that's bizarre in its own right. Do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? It's a weird and job, definitely. Old. Yeah. What about you, Gary? Uh, you're playing everywhere <laughs> all the time, so <laughs> there's got to be one or two. I would say Kazantip Festival in southern Ukraine. It well, was, that already was... sounds mental, so... <laughs> <laughs> that the one you fell through the floor? Oh, no, the one I fell through the floor, that was in Belgrade. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, the, the, the one in Kazantip is... Kazantip's a festival that goes for two weeks, and uh, literally everyone's naked. And because it, it's so scorching, it's roasting, like roasting. But I'd Even come, the DJ. I'd, I'd come from a gig in sort of like, I don't know, pff, Aberdeen. I was the so, in Aberdeen. So, Aberdeen. So I arrived into the Kazanti Festival, not doing any research about what it was about, but just realising I'm boiling. And I was wearing my jeans, I didn't have any shorts, I didn't have any t shirts. Did like you get that. your calf? I was, uh, <laughs> uh, and so I get taken by the driver into this uh, festival, Kazantip. And I'm wearing my black jeans, I'm sweltering, I've got a top on, it's quite... And everybody's naked. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely or everyone sliding is sliding about naked. the dance floor. And I'm walking in with my jeans, sweltering, and just going like that, ah, what is going on here, man? <laughs> like, it was, it was the most bizarre... What, not, I've had a lot of it. Falling through the floor in Belgrade was a weird one. <laughs> Heading up on stage and I fell that. through the floor, just as I was about to start. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they weren't Eden in Ibiza, oh my god. Um, but yeah, the Kazanta one was weird, because I didn't have any other clothes. So it was either like, strip completely naked, or keep wearing your black uh, clothes, so I kept wearing my black clothes. Because uh, southern Ukraine, there's very beautiful people there, and then I walk in. <laughs> Keep your clothes on, Gary. So well, I, I remember as well was I was playing a festival in Germany called Fusion Festival, and it was a completely normal festival, just walking about. And it was a similar sort of thing in a smaller scale, and there were showers there. They was just walked around the corner, and just everything was just completely billy bollocks. Just like we're just like. What? It's like, oh, I and that was it. They were just kicking about like it was completely normal. We're like, fair enough, as you were. Definitely a lot more naked chat than I expected. And then, and then the thing, the thing I noticed about festivals as well in Europe, it's like people party, but it's a slower burn, and the, I think don't think they drink as much, and it's just people are enjoying themselves and some taking drugs and stuff. But it's a bit more sort of slower, and everybody's just people just don't look quite as smashed. But I don't, this is the same festival. People don't, don't look quite as smashed. No. Have you seen Glasgow? No. no. <laughs> Oh, abroad. Oh, abroad. Aye, guys, here, I'm saying in Europe, it's a slower. Aye. But that, that festival, right, there was a guy, right, this guy, and he was up a tree, right, and... It, oh, <laughs> Every and good story right, starts a guy up a tree. He looked like he'd just come out the dark room at Belgain, right? <laughs> it's gay as the day, and he was up the tree giving a... <laughs> and I'm like, wow, man, somebody better get him down. He's a danger to himself. I've never seen anybody more smart. The true definition of climbing a tree. I know, watching him, I'm like, I, 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 it was amazing. Um, wow. Wow. Um, it's amazing. On the other side of the coin, me and Gary were just talking about this. I did this gig in Zurich, and because um, obviously I play like some kind of chilled out stuff as well, and it was 
at the top floor of this building, and basically, I need to just describe the scene, right? So you had to phone on this wee, like, plastic payphone thing, right? And just a random person in the club answers it, and it's like, there's three of us, right? Someone's coming down, and they come down in this, like, rickety lift and basically get you, and then you just go up in the lift, and it opens out, and it's, like, a massive, just, like, dive, like, just absolute fallen to bits warehouse with the best music and the best sound system you ever, ever heard and folk just sitting on cushions, like, meditating and smoking <laughs> joints to, like, music. So I was like, but this thing was getting like filmed and put on Facebook. It was a five hour set and I was just like, oh God, what the what have I walked into? But like, again, we were talking about it and it's actually quite a lot of pressure because like I was playing super chilled, like but almost like ambient music, right? For people to, to kind of chill out to, right? So see if you play one wrong thing and people like lose their chilled meditative vibe. You just fucked it. <laughs> so like, it's, you it's break so their chi. basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, really, that's yeah. really challenging, man. Like, like, yeah. Really, it's like actually, one place where it's good to make them fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> right. like, Aye, well, that's, yeah. that is your job. Yeah, that is yeah. your job. It's the total opposite, basically. <laughs> that is your job. Yeah. Do do we have some more questions? That was a belter, by the way. That, that, that well, that stimulated some mental chat. <laughs> that was um, a while ago. That question. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of naked stuff going on there. Uh, any other questions? One up top there, Dessie. Yeah, go for it. What was your most eventful after party you went? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Is there no. one? I can't divulge that. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been through don't, this. Definitely don't remember. <laughs> definitely don't remember. Oh my god! So many. Hard, harder question. See, see, that's the thing, like, you know, you, you go and do the gigs and stuff, you finish the gig and then it's like, there's always someone, it's like, there's an after party here and there's an after party there. And when I first started you go to travelling, I, was, I went to every single one. <laughs> and it was... Uh, <laughs> you seemed really proud saying that. Well, I went to them all, man, which is good. At the time, I was I, like, like, this is great, you know, you're meeting all these different people, but as you get a bit older and you're into it, it's like... Don't do the after party. Like, just don't do it. Because you, you can be tempted. You can be tempted, exactly. <laughs> you can be tempted so Wednesday. much, you know. But you have to really try and be strong with it. Do you do you find them um, like when you go to some places, the promoters are dying to get his on it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Come on and party with me. I, I was over in Croatia at New Year's <laughs> Eve, and I played for them a few times. And the guys are brilliant, and I come off, and I was like, I finished at four. And I had to leave the green room at five to go to the airport. That was great fun, right? Um, and they were just like, just get a flight, just stay, Change just it. stay. And I've, I've got enough experience to go, no, I'm going home. Do you know what I mean? I've been there, I've done it. And don't get me wrong, it's fun, but it's not worth the fallout. <laughs> I think it is a no. difficult... It's, it's fun a, until it's you difficult. wonder where the fuck you are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I've actually got a good one. This actually did happen. So I was playing at this festival, and these guys are like... So it was a festival in England, um, and it was one of the ones where I was just like, do you know what? I'm just going to go wild. It's fine. These guys are like, oh, do you want to come back to Liverpool? We've got this record shop. Where were you, though? It was in Essex. Preston, oh, yeah. and they invited me to Liverpool to a party. So I just got in the car with these guys and basically went to Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally woke up in Liverpool and didn't know where I was. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember as well. I was over. I was playing Decibel Festival in Seattle, and uh, so. But this was this was the day. This was the day before the festival. So we'd been out. Uh, I think DJ Rush was playing, and it was an artist that used to play on. Used to be in summer. Let's go outside, Steve. And it was me, him, and his girlfriend, and we were out. And then Steve's like, "Well, I'm going to go back because we're obviously playing tomorrow and stuff." Is that like, fine? And she's like, "So do you want to come to an after party?" So me and him, me, me and his girlfriend were hanging out. So we went to this after party. And then she's like, oh, do you want, and this is America, and she's like, do you want to go back to a house party? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, is it far away? And she went, no, it was a two and three quarter hour drive. It's because it's America. Aye. So, right. So, Are we there yet? All the way out there, right. And we were there for hours, and then obviously we we're there for a few hours, and then she's phoned him, and he's got to come all the way to get us and all the way back. No. We're sitting in the car and it's just so awkward. And I'm like, are you annoyed at me? And he's going, no, I'm annoyed at all. <laughs> For take you an after party, they took me six hours to come and get you. <laughs> so I just remember going, is it far away? And they're like, no, and I'm going, how long are we driving for? So that, Different idea of distances over there completely. I think though, see uh, the, the point you made there, Stephen, as well, I think it is interesting because if you are a promoter, right, and you've paid however much money uh, and you've brought someone over, it's kind of like, 
in their eyes the least you can do is spend that bit of time with them in it. It's yeah. like, oh, I've just taken you out for dinner, you've came and played for me, but it's like they also need to understand it's not just a party for the it's DJ. A job. It is a job, and you wouldn't show up to your normal job out your tits or like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it, you've got to have that level of professionalism, you do. And I think it starts off party mode. You get some connections, you do some networking, you go to the parties, you meet some people that might give you some more gigs. So there is value in doing that. Yeah. But I think it gets to a point where it's like, look, man, I'm not doing this to piss you off. I'm sorry, but I have to call it a day because if I don't, it's like, see you later. I, th I think most promoters understand in a way if they've been doing it for a while. And as long as you're polite, you don't just like, as I say, I always try and turn up a wee bit air. Even if I'm, if I'm there, I'm not drinking and I've got an early flight back, I'll always turn up a good bit, hang about with them and even stay for a bit. Even if I've only got a short amount of time, just to hang out. Because a lot of these guys book you because they like their music and exactly. they want to meet you and hang out. So if you just go in and out, you, I mean, you can still you can still not go in there and party and spend too much time and get too involved. But you can still go there and spend time and be respectful and give them a bit of your time and get involved in Because that's what they want. I that's what they want. And you can leave a bad taste in their mouth if you just if you just run out the door. Oh, not I mean? aye, aye, aye. That's the amount of times I see DJs just finish their set and two minutes later, they're in the car, back to the hotel. You know, I think it's nice to maybe just at least, oh, uh, uh, just at least spend a wee, a wee minute, yeah, uh, 10, 20, 30 minutes, or in my case, four hours. <laughs> <laughs> three, three days. <laughs> I, know, I think, though, do you know what? It's nice because we've asked a lot of questions in the perspective of being a beginner, but it's really nice to also just hear the other side and, you know, the grass isn't always greener and you do hear other things from the professional standpoint and what, what these guys go through as well. Because I think, I mean, because we know a lot of world touring DJs, I think people think it's like, oh, I'd love to just do that. But see when it's like Christmas Day and you're stuck in Mumbai airport for three days because of some cloud or something like that. <laughs> it's like... It's like, do you know what I mean? It's like, you, then all your family, I mean, that only small few days that you're going to get to with your loved ones, it's like, oh, no, because now you need to go back on tour. Yeah. So you might have missed four. Because see, for me, especially now with how busy we are, my most important thing is my time. Yeah. And I hate when my time's robbed. That's why I hate when my time gets robbed, because I'm like... I and, you know, time is just so precious for us all. So it's like when you're stuck in an airport and things like that and you're getting connecting flights and you're in your layovers for 18 hours and you're maybe missing a gig, you know, it's not always just as clean sailing as I think people think, and you know. People don't realise as well the time, the lack of sleep. And if you've got a lot of shows in a row, I mean, like years ago, I was over in the States and my partner was with me and my mates and all that used to go, oh, it's such a hard, oh, where are you off to? And you've been just taking mick at me all the time, right? Mm. And I remember I took her with me and we were in, I think we were in the output in Brooklyn in this, on the Friday and then we'd literally leave straight there. So we were we were out partying the night before, nothing too heavy, but then we were at output partying and then we'd literally to go straight there, straight to the airport from the club and then we got to Miami and we were playing the Winter Music Conference uh, there and literally see when it came to go to the club at night, she was crying going, I gotta go, and I just looked at her and went, every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and she just went, Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Because yes. you know, people don't get it until because they think that's great, and then you said, "No, you need to go now." And they're like, "Oh, do I go anywhere?" Aye, aye. Oh, but you need. To. Yeah, so. yeah. So well, guys. I mean, I, I mean, if we've got any other questions, guys, it's it's an opportunity to ask anything. If not, not all that's at once. Fine. Not all at once. Joe, maybe over there, who is a wee bit nervous. I spoke to her earlier. You've got a question. <laughs> After yeah. parties to kicks, bro. <laughs> but this is what it's all about, though. No, that's kicks. a great question. Kicks. Kicks, they, they develop in, in, in mysterious ways. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of camouflage? Uh, try and cover it up as much. No. I mean, there's that. <laughs> you get as much as you possibly can out your machines, you know, and sometimes, like, one, one thing I like to do is add a bit of texture to, to kicks. Um, and I sample, like, really old kind of 70s vinyl, like, drum kicks kind of thing, and bring that into to, to a modern sort of, like, stuff out my cog drum machine or something like that, just compress and compress, layer and layer, and then you get something that's pretty good, and you'll have that stored away, and then you'll maybe bring that one into the next point, and bring a, you know, it, it, they just evolve. They, I don't know about you, but my yeah. kicks just evolve. I, I, I work a, I mean, I work a different way. I'll use kick samples, but what I do is, the way I work is a lot of people look for the best kick, or they try and enhance a kick to do this amazing job. But for me, it's about layering up kicks 
and each individual layer does a different job. Aye, so you'll have definitely. one that's got a really nice bottom end sub, one that fills the, f the, the mid frequency, maybe one that's a bit high, and they all come together to form this kind of sonic picture and fill in the job. So rather than looking for this amazing kick, you're joining them all together to make this this well-rounded one kick itself. Aye, so that's absolutely. the way that I work. But I mean, there's no right way. It's whatever way. I think yeah. if you, I think if you're just going straight to the to a, a release and just grabbing a kick off a. Of sort of a drum code release or something like that, and putting it straight into your own track. I, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty heartless. That you know, aye, aye, really it. it's not really. I think, I think, I mean, the kick drum folder that I've got is just it's huge. You know, just uh, years and years of just trying different things and building them up and yep. layering them and compressing them and, and yep. stuff. And and I'll just go through them and and maybe start with one and then bring something else, like you said. Layer it sonically, mm. it's different. And Amazing. I would go from there, but there's too many people just grabbing a kick and thinking, that's fine, I can do that, and just bring it in. I, yeah, that's worked before, I'm taking it. What do you use? Punch box. What about you, Steve? Punch, punch, box, sort of punch, punch box sort of almost does what I'm saying. It's got some synth parts on it, I think, that like do some sort of synth bot mending, and it's got samples and stuff as well. I'm talking about just doing that sort of organically on its on its own. But one of the other things I would say is like saturation, overdrive, sl small touches of that used in a really nice way can really bring up the thickness and the fullness of a kick in a way compression does, but it doesn't squeeze a life out of it, and it almost adds a bit of character and makes it sound a bit analog but it's just really subtle and knowing how to use it but this is all just going over and over and over and eventually you develop your own style and sound of doing it right what about you Stephen? what would you say about your kicks as well i kick drums i mean it's sometimes there's ones that you've got stored in the bank sometimes there's ones that you know sometimes they're taking an old track but grabbing the first wee part of it yep. and sticking it over the top of something that you like you go wow that's changed the characteristics of that kick drum there brilliant one tiny wee noise and talking we can totally change it it's even a tiny that. closed Aye, hi -hat. Drums. Yeah. <laughs> just speeding the track up a wee bit just, just Aye, changes just the like sound changes it out Aye, so even like bouncing out reverb resampling it and laying that own its own reverb under it can add some characteristics to a kick drum it just depends you know so I sound guys. Well, that's the first one. So look, by the way, this has been amazing. I hopefully, 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 you've all enjoyed this coming along tonight. It's been a total first for us. Well, we've been para riots all week. <laughs> that is the truth. The para riots. Like, uh, that's by the way, it's I should have phoned the you. Told you. I'm not coming. I, I can't <laughs> make it. Honestly, all week, all week we were like that. You know, oh, Welcome is anyone going to come? Riots. Or who knows? Um, so we did want to do it again. I was saying we'll have some music playing at the end. So feel free to you know chat away, ask any questions. Yeah, you're your not ten. Get bevied. Um, get bevied, and I know Aye, the bar's open till ten. So. Yes. So thanks bus to Liverpool. So much. <laughs> bus to Liverpool tonight with Rebecca. Well, look, everyone got an after party. Kazantum style. <laughs> Hopefully nobody's they're on all naked by the end. <laughs> but um, so again, thanks so much for joining us for the first Escapade live show. It's been a real, real honour to sit in front of you. Also, just want to ask: Is this something you'd come back to again? Would you come and attend this kind of thing again? Yeah. Would you spend fifty pounds or dig it next time? <laughs> Well. Did you do the hydro? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, because, you know, I'd love to get Davey Forbes on. Yes. He's, a, he's brilliant. He'd be a great guest. We're, I'm already thinking, of, like, guys, we have brilliant to come on. And we've had so many great guests. It's like, this is something we'd love to do again and get some of these people on couches like this again, because it doesn't really happen enough. And again, we want to... Scotland's a small community, really, and we should work more together than we have in the past. So, And this is a testament to in here. So round of applause to everyone in here as well, man. <laughs> And just to say, honestly, I can't thank the guys enough for coming along, taking the time out of their night uh, on a Thursday night to come along and yes. spend this time with us. I appreciate Shouts it. Shouts to Gary, Rebecca, and Harvey. Pleasure, pleasure. Now go to Beatport and buy all their tunes right now. <laughs> so uh, Jack Dyer and, and Nick, maybe? Yes. So they're, they're, they're going to play some tunes for us, see us yeah. out. Whatever they are. There no pr no there. pressure, no do pressure. Do a catwalk. Come on. Hey, yeah, we had a lot of DJs. <laughs> By the way, they're also just about to play on the brand new Pioneer DJ mixer, which this is the only one in the UK right now. It's in here. So no pressure because the trips have never used it either. So they're, they're going to they're, they're, they're gonna find out. Don't spill in on it. But uh, it's pretty cool. So if you do want to look at the six channel mixer, definitely go and get a wee look. Um, no requests.
Um, uh, please, please no, please no. And if you've got any questions on it as well, Sam from Pioneer is up the back, so if you've got any questions about the mixer, but I do know he needs to shoot off soon back to Manchester, so we'll not keep him too long. Honestly, thank you so much, Chips. Thanks again, guys. Yeah.